Hi, fourth grade. Today we're going to be looking at chapter four, lesson 15, um, practicing problem solving, your favorite. Um, and our strategy today is work backwards. So we're going to first start off by reviewing our problem solving steps. Um, so in a nutshell, the four steps are first we read, then we make a plan, then we solve the problem, and then we check. So we always want to make sure that we complete all four steps. But I do want to take a minute to look at each step a little bit more in depth um, and review what it means to read, what it means to make a plan, what it means to solve and to check. Okay? Um, so when we read our problem, okay, because problem solving is typically a word problem, as we read it's really important to create a picture in your mind. So just like in um, reading, we've been talking about visualizing. How when you can visualize something, it helps you to understand it better. Okay, so practice visualizing in your mind the story, okay? Um, then ask yourself, what are the facts? Write them down. It's important that you either underline, circle, or rewrite down your facts, okay? What facts are unimportant? Cross them off, right, so that they don't confuse you. Oftentimes, the, the mathematicians who create the problems will add extra information just to throw you off. So cross out those facts that are unimportant to the problem so that they don't confuse you later, okay? Then ask yourself, what is the problem asking? What is the question? Make sure you write it down so that you know exactly what you're trying to figure out, okay? And then think about how you will solve your problem. So all of those things are part of reading the problem. And we typically read the problem two or three times before we think about creating a plan and solving. All right, your next step is to plan. So when you're planning, you should ask yourself, how will I solve this problem? Think about similar problems that you've solved in the past, and also choose a strategy to solve your problem. So we talk about lots of different strategies, and we're gonna be looking at a very specific strategy today. Creating a plan. We always write down our plan. Um, step three is to solve. So when we solve, we use the facts and our strategy to find a solution, to find an answer. Sometimes there's more than one step, and today you're going to see that, several steps. Um, and it's a good idea to estimate your answer first. So we won't be doing that today, but you know, in all of the different types of math, it's, it's a great tool to estimate in order to kind of get a, an idea of what your answer should be in your mind. Okay? And then when we check our answers, we always ask ourselves, have I answered the question? Okay, so look back at the question. Have I answered it? Is the answer reasonable? So thinking if you estimated, is it reasonable? You can compare your answer to your estimate if you did choose to do that. Um, and if you can, try to solve the problem in another way. If you can't solve it in another way, go ahead and write down how you know that, it, that the answer is correct. Okay, so those are our four steps. Read, plan, solve, and check. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our strategy today. Today's strategy is to work backwards, okay? Um, and I actually really love this strategy and I think you're gonna have fun practicing it today. So let's go ahead and take a look at our problem. The problem today says Carl bought some guppies in March. He had four times as many guppies by the end of May. He had 46 guppies by the end of June, which was 10 more guppies than at the end of May. How many guppies did he buy in March? All right, well that was a lot of information in this problem. So I know I'm gonna have to read the problem a couple times. But as I was reading it, I started to visualize. What is this about? Well, first of all, a guppy is a type of fish. So I'm picturing fish in a fish tank, and I'm thinking about a boy named Carl who bought some guppies, who bought some fish, okay? And he put them in a tank. And then I'm seeing that there's lots of different months, okay? Um, starting in March, where are we? Starting in March, and then all the way to May. And we're learning that he's getting more and more guppies. So the guppies are starting to have babies. They're reproducing, okay? So I'm visualizing this problem, and I'm realizing that, okay, it's about a boy. He bought some fish. He put them in his tank. And after a couple months, he got a lot more fish, okay? And then I'm, I'm trying to figure out, well, how many did he start with? So that strategy of visualizing can be very helpful, okay? Um, let's see. So I'm going to underline some keywords. He bought guppies in March. He had 
four times as many guppies by the end of May. He had 46 guppies at the end of June, which was 10 more guppies than at the end of May. How many guppies did he buy in March? Okay, so I'm looking for some of my math words too. Four times, I see the word times, that means I have to multiply, okay? 10 more, more, that means I'm gonna have to add. So see how I'm reading my story, I'm going in and I'm looking for those important words. And then I'm gonna underline my question, how many guppies did he buy in March? So going back to the beginning, how many did he start with? So like I said in the beginning, it's important to write down your facts. So fact one, he bought the guppies in March. Fact two, he had four times as many by May. Okay, so I'm gonna think, okay, I'm multiplying four times. Next fact, he had 46 guppies in June. And in June, he had 10 more than in May. So again, I'm thinking 10 more, I'm adding that, okay? Um, so I have my facts written down, now I'm gonna figure out what my question is. Well, I see up here that I circled it. How many guppies did he buy in March? So I'm putting it into my own words. How many guppies did Carl start with? Okay, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So my plan, I told you today that the strategy that we're gonna use is to work backwards because we know he had 46 in June and he had 10 less in May and four May was four times as many as March. So we're gonna start with what we know and we're gonna work backward, okay? So he ended up with 46 in June. So that's the number I'm gonna start with. Okay, he ended up with 46 in June. Well, May is the month before June. So 46, he had 10 less in May, right? In June, he had 10 more. So that means he had 10 less in May. So 46 minus 10 is the number of guppies that he had in May, in the month of May. Well, that should be mental math, 46 minus 10 is 36. So now we're moving backwards. We know that he had 36 guppies in May. All right. Well, we also know that May had four times as much as March. So I will divide 36 by four. If you don't know 36 by four, then I want you to think what you do know. Ask yourself four times what equals 36? Well, you all should know that four times nine equals 36. So using that inverse relationship, 36 divided by four equals nine, okay? 36 divided by four equals nine because I know that nine times four equals 36. So if we did it correctly, we should have our answer. Carl started with nine guppies in March. Okay, boy, he had a lot more by the end of June, right? So I had all this information under my planning section, but I was kind of solving it as I was working backwards. So we're just gonna go over the steps again. Case okay, had 46 in June, minus 10, ended up with 36 in May. Okay, 36 in May divided by four gives us nine guppies. So in March, Carl bought, excuse me, bought nine guppies, okay? And in order to check our work, we're gonna use the good old opposite operation. So I'm going to check, I'm gonna start with nine, and I'm gonna use the inverse or opposite operations to check, okay? So we start with nine, we multiply by four, right? Because he started with nine and then had four times as many as in May. So nine times four is 36. We have 36 in May, and then we know he had 10 more in June. So 36 plus 10 equals 46. Okay, so that was a review of problem solving, but also an example of how to work backwards. And we're gonna practice working backwards with lots of problems in class tomorrow. All right, great job, fourth grade.